So I just started like trying to make a top-down game in Game Maker, and there were a lot of top-down games coming out at the time and doing really well. How in Miami and Monaco and Teleglitch all were coming out right around that time, and were all pretty huge games, and all have extremely basic movement and feel to them. And I never really played anything that was top-down that had a sense of weight and a sense of embodiment. It took a long time for the aesthetic to come together and like the whole vibe of the game didn't really fully exist for, I don't know, probably like a year of development time or so. The first thing was probably like the procedural animation. That was like something that I started doing very, very early on. Where I, like I didn't really want to learn to animate and I thought that the procedural animation would be fluid and cool and not that hard. It turned out it was very, very, very hard. But one of the constraints on it from the outset was that the ape was going to be all one color because it just made that animation a lot easier to sell because you're not seeing all the individual bits move around you're kind of seeing this this mass of ape and it just looks better when you can't distinguish the parts from one another and so that was like the beginning of the aesthetic and then i just started like looking into like looks that would make sense for that And so I started looking at like a lot of Saul Bass posters and Ali Moss posters and then like the Saul Bass intros and intro like other animations that were inspired by those and started playing with shaders and grime shaders and all that stuff. It just kind of evolved from there and like at a certain point I had to make a trailer for the game and I was like totally obsessed with the song You've Got to Have Freedom by Pharaoh Sanders. <laughs> All of a sudden, like that was the through line of the of the game, and like all of my aesthetic decisions from that point forward were kind of checked against the vibe and feeling of that song. That also informed the visual style and the and the audio in the game, of course. It also, like, it made sense because so much of what the game was about was, like, about this improvisation and reactivity. That was something that I was already interested in and already going for. That musical style also really matched very well with that Saul Bass jazzy poster style. And so I think to some extent I just got very lucky or also that I wasn't stuck to anything that wasn't working. It felt like it took a long time to find all the elements that would fit together in the way that they did. Um, and then once they had all come together, it like really locked into place and really felt like a solid, cohesive aesthetic from that point forward. I had had like a very rough sketch of what the vibe was. Like I had like ripped drum solos from YouTube and I had like cymbal crashes when you killed people. And that was the extent of the sound design, basically. Like, there were gunshots and footsteps and stuff, but they were all terrible. It was all just kind of like a rough sketch of, like, what the game would sound like. Matt Bach came in and did just really some amazing groundbreaking work to fill out that system. I remember saying very early, like even before I started, I just wanted to make like a violent game. I think finding the tone was hard, um, just because like I wanted the violence to feel a certain way. Like I wanted to feel brutal and intense and kind of overwhelming, but also not gross in any way, not like it's trying to represent 
some kind of real true violence, if that makes sense. I was trying to like overdo it in a way that was silly instead of gross, you know? The, the fact that people are just kind of blood water balloons in this world. It's meant to feel arcadey and meant to feel like a heightened reality, if that makes sense. I think the main lesson I would take from this, I just never want to work on a really large scale project by myself ever again. I really, like, it was because Matt and Bennett came in toward the end and Ben ended up doing all this work on the game and it just helped me finish it, basically. I'm extremely lucky that I, like, happen to be friends with two of the most competent, talented people who are making video games right now and that they were down to work on this thing with me. I don't know how I would have finished it otherwise, really. Like, I don't know if I could have gotten out of that state by myself at all. I also just, like, as a result of that process, like, have learned, like, the value of collaboration and what that means in so many different ways. That was definitely, like, the main takeaway for me and the main way I'm going to change my behavior going forward based on this experience.